72 minutes. The clock has ticked away, and it looks like under lights on a historic night for the Munster province, indeed, that Dennis Walsh and Davy Fitzgerald will have to gather their players again and face another 20 minutes of championship hurling to decide who wins this Munster title. Referee blows the full-time whistle, and it is indeed a draw yet again. It's been a most interesting second, a far better second. Where Cork 111, Waterford 14 points. The floodlights are on, it is raining in Thurles, but I guarantee you nobody is going home yet as we wait to see who is going to claim the Munster title of 2010. Mm. Cyril Farr, Tomás McCahey and Gerlach Nan are with me here in studio. Mm. Ger, it was tight last week at the end, it's even tighter this week. Well, I was just thinking there, you know, in the last nine matches these two teams have played in championship matches, there have been three wins for Cork, three wins for Waterford and three draws. Yes. You know, so when you have a scenario like that, it's no wonder that games become tentative, they become tactical, and, you know, it, players are afraid to take a chance. And really, that, that's what was out there today. But it was so tense. Mm. You know, n nothing came to open up the game. So yes. when, it, when, it, when it starts like that, it often goes on. And unless a gap opens and yeah. unless goals come, mm -hmm. it, it, the game doesn't become free-flowing. You know, people will say it's a useless worst of final. It's not the worst I've ever seen. Oh, I yeah. played in a lot worse than it. Well, I played in when there was 13 points to 11, when there was 70,000 people here. And, and it was the same way. It got so tense from the start, yeah, yeah. it never, never, it Jeez, never so opened that, up. That was a long, long that, time that, ago. I know, I know it was a lot. <laughs> it, it was. But I know, that, I know. That's the way, that sometimes <laughs> that's the way matches go, you yeah, know. Yeah, and yeah. Yeah. Now, like, uh, Watford were really kicking themselves. You know, Owen Kelly got three chances <laughs> yes, to win the yes, game. You know, yeah. two frees, a ball from play. They got plenty. Ch Watford should have won this game already, but mm. Cork are just hanging in there. No spectacular play on either side. It's kind of a, a free ridden game. The frees are deciding it. Giving away a free is nearly a criminal offence here. But at the same time, it's intriguing. I find that, you know... It, oh, it, there's it, no it's doubt. It's I mean, every, every muster find whether the quality of the play is yeah, sort of it's particularly good yeah. or not. It's still but it's I know people will be saying... Obviously, it's intriguing. People will be saying, can you blow them off the field if they, if they met them? But that's totally different. That's totally different. It's extra time now is a new game. So we'll have to wait and see what teams the two of them are going to line out now for this extra time period. Yeah, yeah. It'll, be, it'll be very mm. interesting about Liam Lawler. He seemed to twitch, uh, got some kind of knee the last day. He took yeah. him off near the end and Prendergast went back. You know, and like he did that last week. Now it'll be interesting what 15 are going to come out and You'll find an extra time someone will get a pint or two early on. 10 minutes goes very, well it might go very fast and out in the, uh, slow out in the field, but for us mm -hmm. it goes very fast. A goal is going to win it for either one. Like, and again, the goal chances seem to be coming, even though Walter doing a lot of hurt, the goal chances seem to be coming the Cork side. The game was so tight that we thought the goal that Cork got might just be the score to separate them. Yeah, no doubt about that. I mean, Cork did need a goal, Michael, at that stage to, to ignite the challenge, certainly. And look, there's no doubt in my mind that Ben O'Connor's trying to put this one over the bar. He's looking for a bit of uh, direction and, and a bit of power in his shot to keep it down because it is it is a tight angle, you know, mm -hmm. but uh, you take those when they're, when they're given to you, certainly. Yeah. And it did like, ignite the Cork to challenge. Uh, absolutely, you know. And um, I mean, Ben was kind of maybe off farm last week from a few frees. This is a difficult angle, and I think that he was aiming for the black spot there, certainly to put the ball over the bar. But it did, it did lift Cork for a period of time. Uh, Paddy O'Sullivan came on and the start of the second half and lifted their game as well, you know. And I just kind of felt with Waterford at the end, one thing that baffled me was maybe switching Milano to full forward yeah, and yeah, putting Shane Walsh yeah, in there because yeah, yeah. Paul yeah. Cadigan came into the game in the second half yeah. period had a, and a very dominant and you didn't see much of a goal threat from, from yeah. Waterford against Donald Cusing. He looked so comfortable there all night. You know, and I think that was a bit of a blunder on Waterford's side as well. But after Ben O'Connor got that goal, sir, Waterford did respond to it and got a couple of good points to put themselves back in front again. Yeah, well, like if he went for a point, it would have been a level play. But like, this, this is a fantastic score. Like, John Mullion, you, you think he can score this. He goes off careering down the left side. He's a terrible angle. And like if it goes wide, to be kind of given out. But that's an impossible shot. But again, he, he rises. He does things for Watford. And he does them against Cork. Like, he's like every year. Exactly the same it, way last week. That score in most yeah. matches. Now here again, they're down the line. This is up in there. Now young Shane or something. Not, or Shane, not just for the catch. Shane, Shane Walsh. Yeah. Shane Brilliant Walsh, catch. Yeah. He comes down. Has a look around, back over the barrel. That's as good as you see anywhere, and they're back level again. Mm -hmm. They responded well, like, and again the game was in the balance. That's a great catch and a great score. And like they answered, they answered. Cork didn't drive on when they got that goal, and you think they would. But like uh, Shane Wrench wound up being taken off. It's going to be interesting to see what 15 takes the pitch for both sides. Yes, of course it is. But Cork did get a penalty. They did. They got a penalty, and Patrick Hogan was gone off. He's that penalty taker. And I, was, I thought it was very severe. Now, it, it, it was definitely a penalty. Mm -hmm. He's brought down from behind. No question whether it's a penalty. John Garner has come up to take the penalty. 
Now, I, 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 I was just thinking that, talking with Tomás that, you know, Patrick Hogan is a brilliant stick man. And I don't know why Cork didn't bring him out in the half forward line. Mm. He can play very well at centre forward, mm. at wing forward. He has very good stick work. And today you need players with stick work. You know, now, the, 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 it's a great save from, the, from the, the penalty. But at the same time, you know, it's the right height. If you're on the line, if you're the back, you want the ball coming just at that height. Head height, it gives you a great chance to save it. Mean, it's re yeah. resting there, lads, with this. Both midfielders, Shane O'Sullivan blocked it and Richie Foley, they were the two that were brought mm. back into the goals of the goalie. It's unusual enough that that happened yes, to both midfielders. Yes. Mm. Yeah. I mean, it was a chance, I suppose, if, if that goal had gone in, you would say maybe it, uh, at the that time of the game that they would have pushed on and maybe won the match as well, you know. So, um, I, I look, I mean, you then say Waterford and the chances that they had around, they should have put the game beyond sight then at that stage. There was three or four chances from Kelly, from freeze, you know, and from play, and maybe should have won the game but for Waterford at that period Waterford of time. Is, Waterford yeah. at the same time as Waterford is something mm. that Cork haven't got. You take that when Ben got the goal. Cork, uh, Waterford came back and got mm. the next four points mm. in a row. Mm. Cork, had, in, last day they didn't push on when they got the two mm. goals. They didn't push on again today. They let Waterford score the next mm. four points. And then at the end it was all Waterford. This Waterford got the three chances. Really Cork got no chance to win the game at the end. Mm. They won a few no. balls but there was no danger for them. So mm. Waterford uh, are battling. Okay. They have mm. character. Mm. You know, Cork having the same fire about them as Waterford have. I suppose any kind of, of normal predictions are out the window at this stage because well, yeah. the last day at the end Cork were winning and, and Waterford got the goal Re at the replay, dead. replay next Friday night and, and no charge and then for free <laughs> and then a penalty shootout I presume at the end as well yeah but Mike what's going to happen here someone's going to hit the front even the throw in here is vital the breaking mm. the ball just midfield to get the first even the first score even you might laugh at me the first wide to get the ball down there and back up but underneath fresh the puck legs, out fresh legs are going to be vital yes. now I mean yeah, fellas are well. substitutions not. substitutions yeah. guys have taken a bit of injury yeah. some guys maybe put on hamstring and stuff like that, yeah. calf muscles, yeah. substitutions are the crucial here. Fresh men, fresh legs, and whoever has the best strength and depth on the, on the, on the, on the sideline will win this match. We uh, were just uh, debating there, Ronan Curran uh, looked like he got a knock or uh, pulled something in the first half. He will not start this, this extra time period. Uh, will you make him? Um, William Egan, yeah, I saw William Egan last uh, Wednesday night with oh, Copper yeah. 21s yes. against Tipperary, and I thought he was outstanding, being honest with you. He's very, very good horror. Very strong. Um, I think he will be uh, a very good replacement as well. But I, I, I yeah, suppose an it's, it's an natural. And if you look at Cork, yeah. right, I mean, losing Shane O'Neill, losing Sean Og, losing Ron Curno, you know. So it is a test of character, as I said, at half time. For the squad, how strong is that squad that Cork have carrying? You're carrying 28, 29 players or 30 players. How strong are those guys that are on that squad? And everybody's getting their chance, you know. So it's a big ask for William Egan to be going in, but I'm, I'm it, sure he's well able for I'm it. I'm sure he is. And even though he played, as you said, during the week, I mean, it's only 20 minutes now, so he should be up for this. Oh, yeah, that was Wednesday night. He had four yeah. In between these guys, listen, William Egan will be hoping to get out there. He wants to lay his stamp. He had a great game Wednesday night against Tip, even though they lost it. And he'll be, he'll be, I'm not saying he want Ronan Corn injured, but he'll be happy to get his chance there. Of he and he'll, yes. he'll, he'll yeah. give it everything he can. There's another fellow there in, in, in the car backs people might know much about Michael Welch. He's from a small club. Now, he's a beautiful stick man, great to read the play. Maybe not that physical, but yeah. you know, I wouldn't be surprised if he slipped into the wing back or corner back as well. You know, I mean, if Waterford have Dan to bring into the equation, right? You know, if Ken McGrath to bring into the equation, you know, you'll yeah, you yeah, yeah. McGrath that we started last yeah. Hasn't yeah. come into it, and they, they will bring in a bit of. Uh, I mean, Owen will bring in a bit of pace to it and stuff like that. Yeah, it might mean Dan maybe to catch a puck or at the edge of square to maybe turn this game, and that's it's, well, it's, well, going, it's going to hinge on something. Well, tomorrow, like, the them tomorrow, they might as well because you see, Owen, Owen Kelly and John Milan are still the big threat, mm. you know, this and they're getting mm. very little support from the other four that are there score wise, you know. So, uh, no, no, Cork, Cork, uh, you know, are, are going to bring in, you, you know, Egan tonight, is in. Yeah. No, Egan is a really one of the big prospects in Cork. It'll be very interesting to see how he does here. But three Cork defenders already gone. This is a real chance for Waterford now, mm. you know. And whoever loses this game is going to stagger into Crow Park <laughs> <laughs> next yeah. Sunday, you yes. know, for the, for the oh, quarterfinals. So yeah. there is so much at stake. You know, after all, after all, after two full games, it all comes down now to 20 minutes. The Munster, Munster, Munster champions and the place in the All Ireland final, avoiding Kilkenny. There is so much at stake in this in this 20 minutes. And and the unusual, nay, unique fact that we're playing this monster final of this section of anyway under floodlights. Yeah, I mean, when you guys were playing a monster final, I think electricity. Well, well, I'll tell you what, we'll tell you what, Dad is a back, Mark Little, Dad is a back. You want lights because he'd be flying around the whole time. So long ago, Michael, you'll be looking at the bottom of the shower area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah,
it's it's not the same as football. It, there's a kind of an unreal effect. It's like Cinderella under the Christmas tree. It isn't the same as football. No problem under lights. Like of course, you know, obviously, but yeah, more than now, the smaller, smaller ball, ball yeah. and the ball is it's a different what, thing. What happened Cinderella under the Christmas tree? Should be dancing. That's a new one for us. I'm glad you asked that joke because I wasn't going to. Well, we have space. We have space in the ships last week. We've got a new nickname for you now, sir. Cinderella. There was supposed to be. I I know that we're entitled to take a little bit of a break in that, but there's supposed to be a kind of a minimum turnaround for this now. Cork are ready to go for it, and uh, Davy Fitz is taking the max and a few, Ger. Well, he is, but I mean, there's an awful lot to organise for this. What changes they make? There's a lot of discussions to make, and you know, the decisions that he makes now is go are going to decide amongst the final. So if you have to break the rules slightly or bend them slightly, why not uh, do so? You'll never do that. Uh, well, uh, I don't know where he learned the uh, oh, well, yeah, yeah, uh, He got, he got more suspension with him to <laughs> Bend the rules. Uh, oh but God. I suppose if there's a small fine or something at the end of the day, that it won't matter worry, if you yeah. win the monster title. No, and like the thing is, it's another thing, Michael. People say, like, we don't need a monster or an instant title. Because I can tell you one thing, there's, 30 or there's, there's, yes. there's two turkey panels out there tonight, and they'd actually die to win that monster title. There is uh, um, a...